In this video, we're going to talk about circular speed and velocity. There are two types of speed when we're talking about objects traveling in circular velocity. The first is angular, which is essentially just how quickly the object is moving in a circle. The other type is called tangential speed, and that's where we have a linear equivalent to circular motion. So it's essentially if we had an object moving in circular motion, then we were to release it from circular motion, like spinning something on a string and letting go, and it would be the essentially linear component to that circular motion. And it's essentially the tangent to a circle. So let's start with angular speed. We use the symbol omega to represent angular speed, and there's a couple ways to calculate angular speed. The first one is just using angular units. So we have delta theta, and theta is representing the angle um, as an object moves around a circle. So for example, this object right here, we can calculate how far it's gone around the circle by using this change in the angle. The other way that we can calculate is using the linear equivalent, kind of like a race car moving around a circular track. If we knew the linear speed of the race car, what the speedometer would say, we could calculate the angular speed if we knew the radius of the circle. And so the V here is representing whatever would be on the speedometer, and then the R is the radius of the circle. So here's a couple examples. The first one here is saying if we swung a bat in a half circle at a, uh, in 1.5 seconds, what would be the angular velocity of that bat? So the information that we know is that we've swung in a half circle, and the time was 1.5 seconds, and we're going to calculate the angular velocity. So the equation we'll use is the angular velocity is equal to the change in the angle over time, and we use SI units to describe the change in the angle. So here's our angle. It would be 180 degrees, but the SI unit is radians, and a half circle, if I look over here, here's my what we call a unit circle, and here is one half of a circle. It's 180 degrees, which is equal to pi radians. And so this is what our theta is going to be, pi radians. And so let's go ahead and plug this into our equation. When you use your calculator, you would literally press the pi button, pi is 3.14, and then divide that by 1.5 seconds and we'd end up with 2.1 radians per second and a lot of times we don't include the radians here we'll just say per second because radians is actually a unitless dimension so we could just say this and that would represent the same thing let's try another example so here's another one that's going to use the linear equivalent and so our equation we're going to use is that second one we saw where we'll have velocity over the radians. So let's read this one. A race car is going around a circular track with a radius of 122 meters at 90 kilometers per hour. That's a linear velocity. What is the angular speed of rad uh, in radians per second? Now I'm using the terms speed and velocity interchangeably and we'll get to the difference. For now they're the exact same thing. First we gotta make sure all of our units here are in SI units. So our radius is in SI units, we have that in meters, and our velocity, our speed here, needs to be in meters per second, and it's in kilometers per hour, so we can convert that. I have 90 kilometers per hour, there are 1,000 meters in a kilometer, so I'm setting up a conversion factor here, kilometers will cancel, and then there are going to be 3,600 seconds in an hour, so my hours will cancel, and so our velocity in SI units will be 25 meters per second. So let's go ahead and plug these things into our equation here. And so we end up with an angular speed of 0 0.205 radians per second. And we could also say that's just per second because we don't necessarily need to include the radians part. So we could just say that as well. Either one is acceptable. Now although radians per second are the SI units, um, we oftentimes use rotations per unit time to describe circular motion. So RPM, for example, would be 
revolutions or rotations per one minute. And so a lot of times we want to convert RPMs to radians per second. And so here's how we would do that. Uh, in this problem, it's saying that the tachometer of your car is reading 1200 RPM. And we want to convert that into radians per second. So here's what a tachometer looks like. And so if we're at 1200, we'd be right about there. And using that unit circle, one complete rotation of a circle would be equal to 2 pi radians. So that'd be one time around. And so to convert our RPM, I'd have 1200 uh, revolutions. I'm just put revolutions here per minute. And I'm going to convert the minutes into seconds. There are for every one minute going to be 60 seconds. And so the minutes will cancel because they're on opposite sides of the fraction there. And then I can convert the revolutions into radians. And for uh, every revolution, there's going to be 2 pi radians. And so the revolutions will cancel, and we end up with a speed of 126 radians per second. And so there's our SI units. Okay, so that's angular speed. Let's talk tangential speed now. Tangential speed can be calculated by multiplying the angular speed by the radius. So here's an example of a problem. You're spinning your car keys around on a 30 centimeter lanyard with an angular speed of 6.5 pi radians per second. You actually let go of your keys and we want to calculate the tangential speed of the car keys as they fly through the air in a straight line. So let's start by listing the data that we know. So I've converted radius here into SI units of meters and now we can go ahead and plug this information into our equation and the tangential speed will be 6.13 meters per second. Okay and finally what about velocity? Well velocity uh, is going to be a vector rather than a scalar and the difference between a vector, uh, vector and a scalar is that vectors have directions. We need to figure out what the direction is. We really have two ways that an object can be moving in circular motion. Could be moving clockwise or could be moving counterclockwise. And so what we use is the right hand rule. And you take your right hand, and here's my right hand right here, and what you do is you wrap your fingers around the direction of the motion and so my fingers are going to kind of curl into the direction of the motion and then you stick your thumb up and so here in this example I have my thumb sticking up and it's sticking up into the air and though this would indicate a positive direction essentially we'll either have positive direction or negative direction in the other example here I have it spinning the other way so if I want to curl my fingers around that way I actually have to flip my hand upside down and so now we have a negative direction. And so our general rule is that if the motion is counterclockwise, we're going to have positive direction. And if the motion is clockwise, we're going to have negative direction. And we could just indicate that by either a positive or negative sign. And that is angular speed, velocity, and tangential speed.